This episode of the Tall Freak Podcast is dedicated to Mad Hatter Industries, a veteran-owned apparel company promoting mental health initiatives. You can find them on Instagram or on their website, madhatterindustries.ca. So is this our first show since COVID ended? <laughs> it's the first post-pandemic show. I feel like, I feel like Tom Hanks and Castaways. <laughs> <laughs> he survives it, then you're like, okay, now you've got to start all over again. Yeah, now it's back to weekly haircuts and beard trims. And That's right. Yeah. Back to having to shower constantly. Yeah, sweatpants. And be presentable. Oh, no, I'm Our still God. in sweatpants. <laughs> I'm not. Dude, I'll wear it to a wedding. If I have to. Can we talk about that, though? Like, since I before yeah. I moved to, to Canada, it was like, you know, jeans all the time. Like, at, at the worst. Like, every contractor at least had jeans on or, you know, some kind of a khaki or something like that. When I got here, I used to talk shit about everybody I see at the grocery store. I'm like, look at this guy in basketball shorts and fucking sweatpants. You're outside. Like, conduct yourself. Present yourself a little bit. Three years later, that guy's me. I'm yeah. like in sweats all the time. Listen, I got a question. Do you wear flip flops with socks? <laughs> no. That I might end the friendship. I cannot do that. <laughs> I cannot do that. At least you're not that guy. No, no, I cannot do that. No, but it used to be something. This is not even to do with the pandemic, where being presentable made made sense and it meant something, right? So, you leave your home, and like my grandfather would cut his grass. With like a button-up shirt, yeah, and dress pants. The, the difference between dressing up and dressing down was whether your collar shirt. Or did, did Mike just lose his mind? Is my, my, hold on, well, time out. We, we <laughs> Mike's lost. His mind. So, um, yeah, there used to be a thing about the difference between dressing up and dressing down was whether your button-up shirt had short sleeves. Yes, like, like you still wore a tie. But your button up was short sleeve. That's how you knew it was like party time. That was uh, Michael Douglas and falling down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With that short shirt and the tie. Going That's what my grandfather ball. did. It was like right. when it was like, oh, that's the, it's Saturday. He's in a short sleeve button up shirt, not a long sleeve one. Just letting it out. Just letting it all hang. The arm hairs are exposed. <laughs> Just let it breathe. <laughs> hey, speaking of that, in terms of we keep joking about this post pandemic, have you noticed... Um, any changes in the business and the way customers react and all that sort of thing? Are people back with a sense of confidence now? People are assholes. Like Honestly, liter- buddy. <laughs> literally. Let's, let's get started. My buddy, <laughs> let's go right into it. <laughs> the, no joke. My buddy has a saying, and he's like, like anytime I find myself like talking about a you know a situation in business, but I, can, I feel like I have so many clients tell me, oh, I listen to your podcast. <laughs> so I'm not going to, hands off the clients. <laughs> I can't say anything about them. But I feel like uh, he's got this, anytime I, I start complaining about something or whatever, he'll say, yeah, people suck. <laughs> like that's his, that's his retort that's right. to almost everything, which is really good because it's calming and it reminds me, like don't be a complainer. Like don't, don't worry, but people are who, who they are. But boy, I'll tell you, lately I have found there is this level of anxiety in business and it's 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 not as much people like coming into contact with other people like at the grocery store and on a personal level it's just really in business there's just this anxiety and it's all a lot of it is surrounded by money it's not as you know there's it just seems like there's so much pressure i need to make money I need to get this bill paid. I got to get this. I got to go here. It's like this just intensity. I think you're bang on right, and I have a theory on that. COVID things slowed down, and then governments, cities, or whatever, they, got their, they had to make their money back. So the inflation, all that stuff, it's just people are feeling the crunch. Mm-hmm. So people want to make that extra money because they can't afford what they did before. Yep. Little things like property taxes have gone up kind of across the board everything's gone up so it's made people tight and that's i was curious with with you because during the pandemic when people couldn't leave it almost felt like well let's do a reno 
Yeah. Because it's something now we're here all the time. We want it to look good. And I just wonder now that things have changed, is that still on trend? Or are they now saying, hey, that money that I couldn't spend on a holiday, I spent on a countertop, but now I want to go to Florida. Yeah. And it's almost like they. Uh, so there's so much here. There's so much to unpack with that because first of all, you have clients who they would spend four thousand dollars on a vacation. They spent ten thousand dollars on a Reno, so they overspent what they would normally spend. So there's that. There's that aspect. So there, that gives you a layer of uncomfortable feeling. But then there's also the people who overspent um, on things and had no idea they were overspending. So uh, I saw a thing the other day that they're going to shut down one of the one of the facilities that they built for COVID. It was like two hundred million dollars. It had it was a quarantine uh, space that the Queens. I, forgive me. I'm not originally from here. I don't understand sure. the politics. It was the Queensland Trust or something like that. Okay. This facility was $209 million to build. It was a bunch of trailers, uh, you know, those temporary office trailers that they have in construction sites and stuff. A bunch of those, and it was built as a quarantine space. 700-plus people actually used the facility, and now it's going to be shut down. So you're saying that 700 and whatever people, 720-something people, used $200 million worth of asset they drew that from the economy that's a problem yeah that's a problem because what happens now is that vacuum that that's created there's other people there at some point there's people who had to live with less than what they did before and so what you what what happens is there's only really there was only really a couple contributors during that covid period so construction health care um restaurant delivery services oddly enough um but also restaurants too because we all think that they got hit the hardest they did but they also worked the hardest so you imagine they took in 20 percent of their normal revenue but they put out 80 you know two times 80 hours a week two times what they normally did so now you have a situation where they're assisting that vacuum so where money's wasted and it's going to these monthly payments to people so that they can stay home, you've got other people who are working. And let's be honest, anything that comes from the government is started with us. It has to come from us first. You're bang on. You know, the whole food and Bev thing, they were told you can't have customers. Then they were told you could have 50 percent capacity in a restaurant, for example. But that doesn't mean they're buying 50 percent of their product. No. They still had to stock and be ready so th their their overhead was the same mm. like think about it like if you're like a restaurant you're not buying half the chicken that you would buy right because you're only serving no you're only serving 50 percent at a time but you're trying to stress that out so now you're spending the same amount but you're only checking out at a at a at a 50 percent clip absolutely 1000 percent true we have we now have an admin staff in the office and if my revenue drops, the staff is still there. So whether they're making 10 phone calls a day or whether they're making two phone calls a day, they still get paid to be here. Yeah. And that's where you, like you said, that restaurant, the, the expenses, the amount of money that they had to put out. And never mind, they didn't even just put out the same amount that they had always put out. They had to put out more money because they're building structures to sit outside so people can sit outside. Those huts were 10 grand a pop. But even just in the plastics, even in like the stickers on the ground, uh, the plexiglass that's still up if you go to certain places. Totally. Not cheap. No. And, and, and who's, who's covering that? Someone just lopping that on your lap and say, add this to what you're already doing. Right. It's amazing. I've seen some people leave it up there because it's like, well, we spent the money now. Yeah, like I was at the bank the other day. They haven't changed it because they figured, well, we drilled everything out of here, so yeah. we may as well leave this. Like, looks like a hockey rink with the, <laughs> you know, the glass. But um, you know, that that was a lot to take. And I, I also wonder if people used spending the little money they had as a bit of a coping mechanism. Oh, because you're inside. Think about it. You're inside. Like we forget. Like it may as well have been twenty years ago. Right. 
I was thinking the other day what it was like to be, quote, locked in. And I was like, man, that wasn't that that long ago. But you didn't know about it. There's no precedent. So you were reacting. Mm. You couldn't digest it. If they tried doing that tomorrow, now we have precedent. We know what that was like. No one wants to go back to that again. No. Good and the, the irony, too, is like 60 years ago, it was, it was exactly like that. Everybody just went home. Like, <laughs> like, and hung out with nothing, like yeah. barely a television set. No, you know, no music, you know, maybe a radio, maybe a television, whatever. But I mean, you're talking about like we were thrown all this technology in the last 20 years, all this entertainment, all this stimulation, all this stuff. And then you put everything on. It's almost not to be a conspiracy theorist here, but it was almost set up that way. It almost felt like you provided some something above an umbrella provided this avenue for this to happen and occur. If you look back, and I, st I honestly, I feel like in a you know, a few decades or a couple generations from now, they're gonna look back and be like, it's like the crustacean period, you know. They're gonna look back at this period and go, boy, that COVID period, boy. <laughs> Like, well, and it, it proved how we were reliant on things that we probably didn't need to be reliant on. Mm. And now it's like, we have to talk to ourselves. <laughs> I don't want to hang out with my family this much. Well, and they look, we look back at Neanderthals and we're like, oh, look at those idiots. They didn't know how to do anything. We're so much smarter. What do you think in 200 years people are going to look at us and think? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Dude, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But it's good to be back. Hey, here's another one. I was thinking about note. this too. What's that? On a lighter note. On, on a lighter note. No, but kind of continuing our chat. I saw a clip from someone the other day, uh, Brian Balmer on uh, HGTV. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, government, whoever, the industry, they all owe a big gratitude to entertainment and to avenues like HGTV. Mm. And that could be extended to YouTube channels, to what we're doing here, the podcast. HGT, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> and his point was, there's a so his, his point was this: there's a direct correlation with Renos and what people do and what they spend on versus what they watch. Right. It's almost like they watch something, they see it, they want it. Mm -hmm. Like think about it: it could be as simple as food, it could be as big as a car, a Reno. When you see something and you see it over and over, other people enjoying it, you want it yourself. Mm -hmm. So the conversation is about how media. And it's funny because you would never connect those dots at first. How media played a role in spending habits and in really lifting up the industry. Without a doubt. And I think it's funny, a lot of uh, a lot of contractor friends of mine, and, and I say contractor, you know, some people think it means general contract. Contractor is anybody who's writing up a contract. So whether you're a landscaper, a tile guy, uh, you know, Anything, subcontractor of any kind, even you work for a company and, and you do your own 1099 or um, however you do your taxes. A lot of different you know, avenues are actual contractors. But I talk to a lot of contractors and they don't like, you know, there's always this HGTV thing or, you know, oh, they don't do it right. Or they just show the good stuff, but they don't show the bad and blah, blah, blah. I've, I've been on a few of the shows and it is a different pace. It's a different it's a completely different pace because the goal is different. And that goal that they're looking to achieve um, is they're inspiring people, as you said, to look at something, enjoy something, and be able to recreate that in their own space. Most of TV before that was like, look at what you can't have, like cribs. Let's walk you through yep. a $30 million house so you can be in awe of Shaq, and then you can't have it. Ha, ha, ha. Whereas HGTV is like, look at this cool fireplace. They're actually competitively priced. This guy is an installer of it. And this, uh, you know, this electrician is blah, blah, blah. And they're wiring up these really cool, intricate pot lights. And Home Depot's big on that, too. So as a construction industry, all contractors within construction really do owe a debt of gratitude to Home Depot, DIY, and HGTV for that reason, because they inspired people to want to do more. With that in mind, give us maybe a taste then of what you would like to see from this latest season of this podcast. Things you'd like to address, things you'd like to accomplish, messages you'd like to get out there. So we're going through, uh, I, I'm 
so excited for what King Tile is going through right now because we're doing what I believe is one of the most creative things with a tile business that I could possibly think of. And I've always wanted that. I've always wanted, I've had certain personal goals in my life and I was always kind of felt like, well, tile's what I do. So this is what I'm going to do. But I'm just now the last couple years getting to a point where I'm taking what I do and I'm creating and I'm reinventing things and I'm looking at every different aspect of what we do and I'm trying to catapult that to a place to do some of the, the personal things that I want to do. And I feel like right now I am in the middle of one of the most difficult hard points of my life and I've never been happier. I have a larger workload ahead than I ever have. I have more tasks and more things to get done and I've never been happier about it. It's a great spot to be in. It's right. it is a spot that I'm humbled by. I think how blessed that you are like every day. I think you are so fucking lucky. So lucky because there's people with nothing to do and they're miserable. And that is the worst place to be. So, yeah, I'm, I feel very blessed and I'm very thankful every day that I get to wake up. And the more I learn and the more I push and the harder I drive about business and about learning how to create something special the more i realize i do not know it's incredible it's absolutely incredible all right guys thanks for stopping in as always this has been the tile Freak podcast and this is shit that i wish i heard when i was young like subscribe follow youtube twitter instagram all the socials you know where to go DM me with any questions or subjects that you want me to talk about. I'd be more than happy to indulge you. Once again, this has been the Tile Freak Podcast, and now it is time for me to get back to work.